All right, guys, this is a video with the torpedo launcher, the Mercury Rise TR-50. Um, we're going to try an HPA, 1100 PSI. Um, the bolt spring was really weak, and it's not returning the bolt back, so it's causing that leak. Um, I ripped it open and discovered quite a few different little things about it, but I, was, I placed a... It has a 55 millimeter spring. I'm not sure of the wire diameter. It's around a millimeter. And the HDR50 has a 60 millimeter spring and it's a thicker wire diameter. So it's a stronger spring. So I installed that in yesterday and I hooked it up and I fired a shot and it still leaked a little bit. But um, when I pushed the bolt back in with my finger, it's just a touch. I just touch it and it goes back in. So what it is I notice is when the pin goes back in the O-ring, the HDR pin going into the O-ring, it's nice and fluid and it slips in very easy. Where this one, when the pin goes in the O-ring, it has a little snap to it. So it's really tight. It's that little difference that's causing the bolt to reset. So I need a, a little bit stronger spring to compensate for that. And that way it'll push it back in. But um yeah, so we're going to try this out with the HPA and the HDR. And I noticed I put a 12 gram CO2 in here, an empty one. And I noticed when I was shooting it last night, the bolt was resetting on its own and it was shooting the HPA. I mean, it's not going to be at the full power because the air chamber is going to be cut in half or, or more by the CO2. So, yeah, we're going to try it again. I got some steel bearings in there, the 8.4 gram ones, because they fit perfectly. And, uh, yeah, let's see what happens now, today. Um, <clears throat> not sure what to expect, but I tried it last night and it worked, but I didn't chronograph it, so we're going to do that today. All right, let's charge this up. Okay. Let's see what we get here. Two thirteen. Two thirty eight. So we're getting up there. We're higher than sixteen jewels, that's for sure. Two oh six, two thirty eight, two forty five, two forty one, and I think we're empty. Yep. Let me see the pressure on this tank. Oh my god, we haven't even used 500 PSI, the gas. Wow, and I even shot a couple last night, too, so. Um, let me see, what other ammos do I got here? Sitting around. Mm. Um, I don't want to go dig them out. Oh, shit. Mm.
Ah, forget taking them out. I'll just try another round of these again with the steel balls. <clears throat> Alrighty, so let's try again. That was weak. 233, 244, 243, 39. Alrighty, so let's shut this off. Um, oh no, we got a jump, so HPA is working. I just gotta fix this spring issue, man, and uh, we're golden. Okay, let me fire this last shot out. See, so you get all those shots when I turn the gas off left. So that CO2 tank is filling up most of the air chamber. So the thing is, when I take the CO2 can out of here, as soon as I pull the trigger, all the air goes out. The bolt comes forward slightly into the magazine here, and then it just needs a push to go back and reset. So when I push it with my finger, while it's leaking, it'll go click, and then it'll fucking, it'll lock up, and it'll seal everything again, and the gun will be working, but as soon as you pull the trigger again, does the same thing and leaks. So, um, the HDR spring... Before I installed that with the stock spring, when I shot it and pushed the bolt back, and I had to push pretty hard... But when I put the HDR spring in, it's just, you just touch it. You just give it a little tap and it goes click and resets and stops the leak. So I'm going to get a little bit stronger spring, maybe just a, a, milli, a point or two of a millimeter wire diameter thicker. And I think that's going to take care of it. And then we'll be able to take the CO2 out. And that's more than half the air chamber. So I don't know, I, for 240 FPS, I think that's around 22, 23 joules we're hitting now. So... When I get that CO2 chamber out, I believe it'll push this up to around the same as the HDR, around 62 joules with this setup. It'll be 62 joules with this barrel, about a 9-inch barrel, or a tuning run, which is the same length, roughly, and the 1100 PSI setup. So, yeah, man, I, uh, all in all, I'm happy. This is a big jump from 12 joules, or, yeah, 12 joules to 22 i mean the highest i was getting was like 199 with the steel balls now we're pushing 240 something with those eight gram balls and it's not leaking so i mean these steel balls at 22 joules i still wouldn't be comfortable with that for power wise for so what i would do is i would use these sweet magazine and i would use pointed ammo sharp ammo tips that are going to stick in because at less, they'll stick in at a lot less power. Like a 20 joules is enough to send a dart into any flash or skin. But where the slug part is, it'll stop and it'll just whack off the body. And it might remain in you, it might fall out of you. But either way, those are going to hurt. And those are going to be more effective than a round ball coming at the same power. So those will also draw blood too. So it'll cause panic in the attacker and might make him leave. But anyways, um, this is just speculation. I mean, my... My opinions and stuff like that, but all in all, I'm 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 happy. This is the next. We got a next step further with this thing, so I wasn't giving up on it yet. But um, yeah. Let's just take this out. There. So what was our high number here? Thirty-nine. 243, 244, 241, 245, 238, so 245 was the highest number. I'm going to crunch that right now. 245. Oh, 
All right, guys, so we're pushing 23 joules right now. Um, it's a nice little increase from the 16 I was able to get it to by drilling out the restrictor. By the way, uh, this has a restrictor in it, and it's built in up in here. There's no valve block. Um, so um, what you have to do is you have to get a long drill bit and then drill all the way through it. Um, I'm going to drill it at wire because it only looks like about a four millimeter opening and HPA needs at least six millimeters or higher. So I'm probably going to push that. It might even increase this. Yeah, because when I fire the trigger, when I gas it up and then I turn the gas off, this is fully charged with 1100 PSI and with no CO2 can in there in a wide open chamber, like over four millimeters. One trigger pull will empty that whole slot. Whereas right now it's taken five trigger pulls to empty that slot. So we're we're only getting like maybe a fifth of the power. Like either way, the power is hindered because of that. That CO2 can being in there. So when we get that CO2 can out of there and then widen this port open, the, the air port, transfer port from the CO2 tube to the valve. Um yeah, once we widen that open, it'll dump this whole chamber in one shot. And that's where we get that was full power from, from the HDR, HDP, HDB, and every other marker. That wide chamber all releases at once. But because my airflow is not enough, when the pin goes in and out, it's only letting out a quarter of that tank. So you're able to get four or five, four more shots off of it. So, yeah, we're going to open that up more. So that way, when you pull the trigger, it releases at once. Because it's too much pressure to go through that little four millimeter crack. Or sorry, the four millimeter porthole. Um, these are just my findings and my opinions, guys. I'm going to find out. I'm also going to add Jonathan Scott's extension chamber on here. His Eric's Max Power Chamber from criticalsituations.com. And I'm going to see if that's any difference. But what I noticed is when the CO2 can comes out, the extra air volume. Like right now, you see the bolt setting with 1100 PSI. Okay, that's fine. It should be resetting all the time at 1100 PSI. But for some reason, that extra air volume in here, it's making the bolt stay out and it leak because it can't reset itself because there's not enough pressure in the spring to push it back. But, uh, yeah, guys, uh, to be continued, we're still going. This is definitely a good, uh, what do you call it? This is good compared to the, the last video, so we're we're advancing forward with this, and that's a good thing. Uh, I'm actually excited because I got a lot more up my sleeve with this marker, and once I get it tuned, we're going to be drilling this out and connecting through here, and this don't fit in my HDR carbines because it's all different here and stuff, and right here, and this and that, and so it's a little bit different. But, yeah, guys, we'll see you on the next one. Take care and have fun.